As promised, this is the complete set of all of the Taos Artist Society painters put together in one compilation. Thank you very much for watching. Bert Phillips was born in 1868 in Hudson, New York. He migrated at the age of 16 to New York and studied at the Art Students League, then on to Paris at the Julian Academy, where he met Ernest Blumenschein and J.H. Sharp. Sharp was already an accomplished artist and some eight years Phillips senior. Bert Phillips came back to the U.S. and was convinced to go out to New Mexico to seek his artistic fortune in northern New Mexico. In 1898, he and Ernest Blumenschein traveled from Denver by horse-drawn wagon toward northern New Mexico. Outside of Taos, some 50 miles, and on a weather-worn rock road, the wagon broke a wheel. One stayed with the wagon and the other hoofed it into the nearest town to find a blacksmith. The town was Taos. Blumenschein was left to defend the wagon from opportunistic bears, wolves, and savages. They managed to wander into Taos after getting the wheel back on the wagon and fell madly in love with the scenery along the way and especially the mountain air of Taos. People were friendly and accepting of the new white men artists. Immediately they began painting and drawing the culture there and were mesmerized by the natural beauty of the people and the adobe architecture. Other artists followed suit. J.H. Sharp and numerous other painters arrived and in 1915 they formed what became known as the Taos Artist Society. Members had to be voted in by seven of the original members, which was a big deal for some of the newbies. Within a few years, hundreds of other artists had flocked to Taos to see what the fuss was all about. The society lasted until 1927, when a general lack of interest in the members warranted the dissolution. Still, they all painted and generally followed a pattern of what and how they painted. In these individual naked artists exposure videos of these Taos Society artists, you'll see many parallels in their subject matter and dramatic landscape painting. Apparently, Bert Phillips died at 88 years old in San Diego, California. Here is a smattering of Bert Phillips' paintings, and be sure to see the subsequent Naked Artist Exposure videos on the other Taos Society painters. I am Preston McCall, and I thank you for watching these, and please send any comments. Please also hit the like and subscribe buttons, as this encourages me to continue making more of these each week. I thank you very much. Ernest Blumenschein lived to be 86 years old and was a fixture of Taos for many, many years. He was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and as a youth studied the violin and went on to study the violin at Cincinnati College of Music. His father was a musician and taught music. He moved to New York in 1892 and then on to Paris Julian Academy in 1894 where he met Bert Phillips and Jade Sharp. 
Sharp mentioned his earlier trip to Taos in 1893, which sort of lit the fuse. He returned to New York with Bert Phillips to work as an illustrator and then on to Chicago, where they were sponsored to go to Taos in 1898, where they had the problem with the wagon wheel falling off and they had to go into town to get it fixed. They fell in love with Taos and both of them started painting there very much. He finally settled in Taos in 1919 after numerous trips back to home in Cincinnati. He died in Taos at the age of 86. He and Bert Phillips were very responsible for the starting of the Taos Artist Society. His paintings, there's a harsh light, a harsh daylight, a harsh sunlight in many of his paintings. <clears throat> in many of the paintings, there's exceptional detail in all the little blades of grass and rocks and whatever. And in many others, they're, they're just loosely portrayed. He also came up with extraordinary skin tones for the Native Americans as well as the uh, Anglos that he painted. I've really always loved his work. He produced quite a bit of work and was quite successful. This is the second individual naked artist exposure video around the Taos Artist Society painters. The first one, of course, was with Bert Phillips. I'm enjoying making these and certainly enjoying looking at many of their paintings. I never really gathered up all of their paintings and really saw any similarities or tendencies that the group is really working on but it was very clear. If you like these, like and subscribe, and I'll continue to make them. I'm Preston McCall. I appreciate your comments, and I thank you for watching. Ernest Martin Hennings was born in New Jersey to German emigrated parents in 1886. The family moved to Chicago and in 1901, Hennings attended the Chicago Art Institute and graduated with honors. He painted commercially and was an excellent muralist, including one in Topeka, Kansas, called The Ascension at Grace Episcopal Church. In 1914, he went to Munich, Germany to study at the Academy of Fine Arts, where he met Victor Higgins and Walter Ufer, who were also studying there. Hennings moved back to Chicago, and in 1917, Curtis H. Harrison, a generous artist benefactor, sponsored a trip to Taos, as he had with Ufer and Higgins, in exchange for paintings. In 1920, he permanently moved to Taos, becoming a member of the Taos Society of Artists, which disbanded in 1927 due to a lack of interest by its members, although they all remained friends and associates. Hennings continued painting and certainly captured some incredible landscapes and portraits of the local American Indians and Hispanics living in the area. He died at 70 and is born, buried in Chicago. In looking at his paintings, I see he followed the formula, if ever there was one, of typical harsh sunlighting, delicate portrayal of his portraits, and a certain compositional perspective similar to the other Tao Society artists, 
Contrary to Leonardo da Vinci, the Taos artists did not always follow Leonardo's lead in painting the horizon landscape, the back of the painting, in a lighter, more bluish tone, but would inconsistently paint it darker and with less of a softer Safamatu effect, a smoky quality, sometimes lighter and sometimes darker. I wonder about their compositions, as in looking at hundreds of these Taos Society paintings, it almost seems like the compositions were made with simple black and white snapshot photos, and then opaque projected onto the canvas as the beginning drawings, tracing the image. This might be a stretch, as I have no proof of this, but as a painter I sense that is how they composed their compositional forms. They seem to have a frozen moment in time with many of them, and not simply just some memory of the scene. I would be curious if any other painters detect this method in forming their compositions to begin with. Not that there's anything wrong with this technique, but moreover that I find it very interesting. Certainly the Renaissance painters used camera obscuras to develop their compositions, so if this is the case, with these Taos Artist Society paintings, and so be it. I appreciate you watching these Taos Society Artist individual videos, and look forward to more of these. I would also appreciate your comments you have. If these inspire you as a painter to follow my heart down the Santa Fe Trail to the enchanting land of New Mexico. It is truly a magical place, rich and breathtaking scenery. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons as this encourages me to make more of these naked artist exposure videos. I am Preston McCall and I appreciate your support. Thank you. Erger Irving Kaus was born in Saginaw, Michigan in 1866. Kaus attended the Chicago Institute starting at the age of 16 and on to the École des Beaux-Arts in Paris studying under William Alphonse Bouguereau. He lived in France for 10 years before returning to the U U.S. in New York and on to Taos in 1902. At 25, he painted a rather shocking piece called The Captive. It is a piece showing a white woman in a white dress being looked over by an American Indian. It is a rather controversial piece and probably gave him a certain notoriety for portraying such a grim situation for the woman. However, later on, he described the event from a story he heard about a young scout discovering this maiden in distress after an assault by Comanches and had brought her back to his teepee to tend to her sorrows. Whatever be the truth of the story, the piece gave Kaus some distinguished early notoriety. Kaus spent the summers in Taos from 1902 until 1927 and was a member of the Taos Artists Society. He had a home in Taos next to J.H. Sharp and was a close friend of Sharp and the others in the society. Kaus died at 69 and is buried in Taos. There is a sense of contemplation in many of his native subjects, a look of deep meditation and self-searching. Many of the pieces are solitary and deeply introspective. His shadows are soft and rarely did he show much of a horizon.
Look for more of these Taos Artist Society individual videos about this fascinating group of painters. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons as this encourages me to make more of these naked artist exposure videos. I am Preston McCall and I appreciate your support. Thank you very much for watching. Joseph Henry Sharp. Born in Bridgeport, Ohio, he suffered a serious swimming accident as a young boy, which caused his hearing loss and eventually complete deafness. At 22, he managed to go to Europe to study art at the Royal Academy of Art in Belgium after studying at the Cincinnati Art Academy. At 24, he returned to the U.S. and traveled to various places in the American West. At 26, he returned to Europe and took classes at the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Munich and in Paris at the Julian Academy. At 34, he had returned to the United States and took his first trip to Taos. Teddy Roosevelt commissioned him to paint some 200 pieces of the Native American warriors of the Little Bighorn area. He and his wife lived up there, at first in a teepee, and then they built a small cabin. Then Phoebe Hurst, mother of William Randolph Hurst, purchased 80 more of his paintings of the American Indians he had produced. And she purchased another 75 on top of it. In 1909, he and his wife, Addie, moved to Taos. However, a year later, Addie passed away. He became the elder member of the Taos Society of Artists and basically was a mentor to many of the younger painters in Taos. Finally, at 93 years old, he traveled to Pasadena, California, but died before he could return to Taos. Sharp produced some 10,000 works in his long life as he was very always focused on his work and a great inspiration to many of the younger painters who came to Taos to see and paint in the art colony. Look for more of these Taos Artist Society individual videos about this fascinating group of painters. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons 
as this encourages me to make more of these Naked Artist Exposure videos. I am Preston McCall, and I appreciate your support. Thank you. William Victor Higgins, also known as Victor Higgins, was born in Shelbyville, Indiana in 1884. Higgins lived until he was 65 and spent considerable time in Taos as a member of the original Taos Artist Society. At nine years old, young Higgins met a sign painter named John Cornelius, who gave him a set of paints and encouraged him to learn how to draw and paint. That started a long life of painting for Victor Higgins. At 15, with the support of his parents, he studied at the Chicago Art Institute. There, he originally met Hennings and Ufer, according to one source. He met Carter H. Harrison, the mayor of Chicago, who was a tremendous supporter of painters. Harrison sponsored young Higgins to go to Paris and Munich to further his pursuit of classical painting. In Paris, he met Robert Henry of the later Ashcan School in New York. Harrison also sponsored his first trip to New Mexico in 1914 where he traveled the difficult road from Santa Fe up to Taos and produced some paintings of the American Indian and landscapes, from which Harrison was given in exchange for his sponsorship. Between 1917 and 1923, Higgins taught at the Chicago Academy of Fine Arts, but soon moved to Taos to become part of the passionate group of painters. In 1919, Higgins painted a mural in the Missouri State Capitol Building and apparently another for the Atlanta, Georgia State Office Building and was obviously an accomplished muralist. Higgins struggled financially most of his life, except for a short stint of being married to Marion Cooper McNay, a wealthy heiress from Texas from 1937 to 1940. After looking at some 400 plus paintings by the Taos Artist Society, I became curious if they used photographs to aid in their compositions and painting details of the subjects. I was quite excited to discover that indeed this was true. There exists photos that Higgins shot of the exact scenes he painted to give him a clear reference of what he was detailing. As I have pointed out in previous videos, this technique is definitely a valid means to keep the model and painting subject still. This snapshot method does provide an accurate rendering of the subject. However, in my opinion, the painter is less sensitive to his or her own emotional attachment to the subject, which is acceptable, but not as self-expressive or as introspective. Being able to draw from the model and scenery seems to be a more genuine way to fully express what a painter is feeling and focusing on in a painting. Is it valid or is it a cheat? Leonardo or Tiziano Vicelli, also known as Titian, would surely say that is not a genuine method. But then again, they had not a clue about what photography was in their timeline. A well-respected art and antiques dealer in Taos today is Robert Parsons of Parsons Fine Art. 
I asked him how Higgins died, and he told me the story that Higgins was having a steak dinner at a friend's home one night in 1949, and had a sudden heart attack and died suddenly at the age of 65. Look for more of these Taos Artist Society individual videos about this fascinating group of painters. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons as this encourages me to make more of these naked artist exposure videos. I am Preston McCall and I appreciate your support very much. Thank you. William Herbert Dunton, better known as Buck Dunton, was born in Augusta, Maine in 1878. He studied at the Cowles Art School in Boston and moved to New York to become an illustrator. Traveling around the western U.S. in 1896, Dunton spent the next 15 years painting western scenes of cowboys, Indians, and the western U.S. landscape for his commercial magazine illustrations. In 1912, he attended the Art Students League in New York where he met Blumenschein, who told him about Taos as the hot new art mecca. Later in 1912, he moved to Taos to begin a lifelong pursuit of his paintings of his Western themes. Douglas Fairbanks, an important successful actor of the time, and Franklin Roosevelt purchased some of his paintings as he achieved some degree of success from his Taos Association, although he continued his ties with many of the magazine illustration assignments for additional commercial income. The Missouri Capitol Building in Jefferson City, Missouri had some 30 different artists paint various murals for the hallways and rooms of the Capitol building, and Dunton was included, as well as, more famously, Thomas Hart Benton. Buck Denton died in 1936 at the age of 57 from pancreatic cancer. His paintings show very much influenced from the other Taos Artist Society painters with color composition and a general snapshot look to many of his portraits of especially cowboys. He is known for his exacting rendering of the many details such as equipment, clothing, and horse anatomy. Look for more of these Taos Artist Society individual videos about this fascinating group of painters. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons as this encourages me to make more of these naked artist exposure videos. I am Preston McCall and I appreciate your support very much. Thank you.
Walter Ufer, born in Germany but moved with his family to Louisville, Kentucky in 1880 at four years old. Ufer was another one of the Taos Artist Society painters. He went to Germany to study painting in his early 30s, back to the USA and then again back to Germany to Munich to study more. In 1911, he married Mary Fredrickson, a fellow artist. They traveled around Europe painting together but came back to the USA. Carter Harrison, the Chicago mayor and patron of numerous painters, sponsored Ufer to head to Taos in 1914, where he met Sharp in Blumenschein. They became friends and he joined the Taurus Taos Artist Society Association. Ufer finally moved permanently to Taos in 1917, where he remained most of the rest of his life. His last 20 years, he befriended William Henry Clower of Dubuque, Iowa, who was a wealthy patron who owned the Clower Manufacturing Company that produced sheet metal building products and the famous Snowgo, a large commercial snowblower sold to many cities around the country. Clower kept Eufer financially secure in his support, although Eufer had a few negative things to say about this American industrialist, as Eufer was a socialist-leaning type who had also befriended Leon Trotsky. Eufer had some definite political opinions toward communist thinking, and Clower was one he spoke against. He nonetheless was glad to take Clower's money, and apparently Clower either did not hear of Eufer's comments, nor did he care. Eufer was also a moody character and developed a strong interest in the drink. He was an alcoholic and eventually succumbed to appendicitis at the age of 60, which caused his demise. His work is typical of other Taos artists in portraying American Indians, however, with a slight tendency to show more of a downtrodden sense of inequality and injustice. His colors and compositions seem to be very much affected by photographs, in my opinion, as there is a typical Taos Artist Society snapshot quality to many of his pieces of the Pueblo Indians. There were numerous others of the Taos Painter Group, although these are the main members of the society. This is the last one of these Taos Artist Society individual videos about this fascinating group of painters. I will make one more to recap the group and discuss my thoughts about their works and importance in the history of American painting. I will make one compendium of all of these. It should be a long one, but nonetheless you'll be able to see all of their works in a, a complete set. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons as this encourages me to make more of these Naked Artist Exposure videos. I am Preston McCall, and I appreciate your support. Thank you.